Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2011 Advanced Imaging Conference in Santa Clara, California. And right now I'm speaking with Jeff Dickerman, owner and president of Optech. They make a lot of products that are of interest to astrophotographers. He's got a whole table full of things here, so let's take a look at what you've got. Well, thanks, Dennis. Um, Optech has uh, traditionally made uh, a number of products that kind of fit between the telescope and camera, and we've expanded into some er other areas. Uh, these are products that would fit between the declination plates and the uh, um, uh, and the telescope system. Okay. Um, and then we also have some of our other products back here. Let's start with this. Okay. Well, this is our uh, Keller Easy Saddle, um, designed by Alan Keller of Plane Wave. Um, we uh, uh, we've got a special stability bar down here on the bottom, and the knobs are on the bottom side. All so right. if you have a large uh, acromat, say uh, say I had one on this uh, uh, this dovetail bar here, you can drop it right in. The stability bar will catch it, drop it back, and then easily lock it into place. So this is you've got this on the deck axis, yes. and now you can take the plate, and when you're bringing the telescope up, you don't have to align it into the slot. No, just put just it on the bar, just fold it in, and especially as you're standing here, you've got the knobs underneath to tighten down on exactly. it, grip it. There it is. Nice All safety feature. It is. really it's makes it easy nice. to grab. And of course it has the other, uh, it has the other features on it as, as well. I'm going to loosen that just up a bit. Just take it so out the got, same way. It's got notches right here, so if you have a safety bolt on there, you can't go too far forward. Yep. Can't go too far back. Very well designed. It's a great design, but we can't take credit for it. Uh, Alan Keller from Plane Wave actually came up with the design and asked us to help him out. So we've been doing, trying to do more collaborative work with, uh, with a number of other manufacturers in the industry. All right. And this is one of our first efforts. Great. All right, what else you got? So this is our uh, Libra uh, Alt As Base, and it allows you to to, it, you can see it's got a dovetail, a female dovetail on the bottom, male dovetail on the top. But the nice thing is it allows you to easily adjust in both altitude and azimuth with controls on one side. Um, oh, yeah. The time it takes to line up two telescopes on a tandem mount is about 15 seconds tops. So if you've got two telescopes you want to co-align, look at this nice little ramp in there with a bearing that rolls it and it locks down. Clever little device. It'll handle right. 25 pounds easily. All right, and it's got Lost Mandy style dovetail on both sides. Correct. All right, so that'll fit a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm interested in the focusers here. Let's move down and take a look at these. Okay, these are the uh, TCFS temperature compensating focusers. We've been making these for a number of years, and it was the original design to uh, have a temperature probe right on the telescope. We uh, fastened this to the telescope tube, and as you know, each telescope uh, has some sort of temperature uh, different or temperature coefficient. So wait a sec, why would you want to have temperature compensation? Well, as you know, uh, as the night cools down, every telescope tends to contract. Uh, some telescopes, the Canada Optics, for instance, are much more severe than others, and it throws the focus off. Um, and what our focusers can do is uh, compensate for that temperature change. So we can actually track the focal shift over time as the temperature, uh, as the, uh, temperature cools down in the evening. So you've got a temperature, you've got a telescope where the temperature is changing, it's changing dimensions, and the focus is shifting a little bit, and you've got a focuser that will automatically track that change in focus? Yes, absolutely. So it'll actually change the focus. If you were taking an exposure, it will move microscopic amounts just to keep track of the focuser as the temperature is changing. That is correct, yes. All right, so let me see what they, how they work. Well, okay, this is our, uh, our two-inch model, um, and as you can see, there's a temperature probe that comes out of the side. That will be attached to the temp to the telescope tube because we want to get a good measure of the telescope tube and the temperature differential as it cools down. We're measuring that with the thermocouple on here, and then sending that back to our uh, firmware in the in the device controller, and then can send the focus to the new uh, position based on the new temperature. All right. So you have to train it first. You do. You have to run through a training session, and I typically do them one, twice per year: once for the spring season and once for the fall season. But once trained. Uh, you, can, you can put it into a temperature compensation mode and allow it to just continue to temperature track. On our original prototypes, the, uh, we didn't have to adjust focus for two weeks. Really? True. So you can go out, uh, I mean, is this a system that's good enough so that when you start up at night, it will actually sense the temperature of the tube and know where to go to be in focus? Yes, it will. So yes. You, or you could set the focus yourself and let it track as the temperature changes. Yes, it's an ASCOM device, so you can use Focus Max or any other automatic focusing algorithm to set the focus, but then you can drop it into temperature compensation mode and let it run for the rest of the evening. 
Wow, that's cool. So you've got a couple of different size models. This is a two inch. Correct, yes. We have the two inch and that will handle uh, loads up to 15 pounds pretty handily. 15 pounds. And, and mm -hmm. how thick is that? A couple of inches? That's about three inches, yeah. And what kind of uh, focus motion It's got do you have? six tenths of an inch of total travel. More than enough to compensate for temperature. All right, Absolutely. so that's a two inch. So then you've got the larger model here. Yes, that's our three inch focuser. And uh, this one will handle 25 pounds quite handily. Um, it, uh, it's being used in professional observatories throughout the world. Uh, it has a, uh, uh, the same basic electronics. We have a number of controller options now. We, we have our standard uh, original TCFS controller, which allows you to have in and out key, key buttons. Um, and then you can also put it in a closed loop uh, temperature compensation mode where the uh, PC no longer needs to talk to it. Most people usually, usually leave it in the, uh, the PC mode. All right. Okay. And then we also have the integrated version where all the control electronics from the box are actually in a small control box on the side. There's no temperature or there's no in and out uh, keypad in this case or in out key buttons and you don't have a DRO but it's all done electronically and this is a little bit of a lower cost device. For, all right, so you just the have customer. the probe come out, attach to the telescope tube. Correct. All right, those are great. Yeah. What next? Okay, so this is our newest focusing device developed for the uh, Celestron Fast Star telescopes. Why did you um, have to come up with a new one for the Fast Stars? Well, the Fast Stars have a fairly limited uh, back focus distance. That's about 146 millimeters behind the, the uh, last mechanical surface. Uh, that's right, because of the uh, HD edge scopes having a corrector in the back, the camera has to be at a very precise location behind the telescope. Doesn't leave you an awful lot of room to put in one of your TCF focusers, does it? Yes, that's correct. Um, what we thought was, rather than moving the uh, camera at the image plane, we can move the secondary rather than the primary mirror, lock down the primary, and move the secondary to actually move that focus back at the camera plane. So this unit, with the fast star telescopes, you can remove the secondary mirror, replace it with the focus system, put the mirror inside the focuser here, replace the system with this focuser, Correct. put the mirror in here, back in here, yep. and then this will drive the mirror back and forth to focus the telescope. Yes. Now, does this all work with the same temperature compensation program that you have? It does. It has a thermocouple inside and a, a small switch inside. So we, can, uh, we know when the stop point is, we can home that, and then we can run the temperature compensation as, uh, as with the TCFS focusers. On the Fast Star HD Edge. On the Fast Star HD Edge. Very right. cool. Yes. That's a nice device. Yeah. All right, so what next? Well, to control the Fast Focus system, we have our new Focus Links controller. Uh, it can control two focusers and has serial, network, TCP IP, and also wireless interfaces. So in other words, you can have a wire running between this and the focuser unit, but you don't have to have anything going to the computer if you want to run it wirelessly. Correct, and if you have an, a smartphone, you can uh, talk to it through uh, your, a Droid or an iPhone application. That oh, really? Control the focus in and out. You don't need a separate hand control, but one is in the works. Oh, okay, very yeah. good. All right, so what about these units down here? Well, these are our uh, uh, camera field rotators, and uh, this is our big one. This is our Pixis 3-inch. It will uh, handle a 25 to 30 pound load. Um, and has an excellent repeatability. We have our original Pixis 2-inch uh, back here. All right, so wait a minute, let me step back for just yeah. a sec. So this is a field rotator that you can use. You can use these on an altazimuth telescope to rotate the camera to compensate for field rotation. Correct. All right, can you also use them to drive a camera to pick up a guide star? Yes, that's been historically the, uh, the biggest mark that we've had is uh, uh, the people that are looking to find a guide star oh. or to compose an image and we sell uh, many of these to the, to the large automated crowds. Um, well, now we've got a, uh, a new derotation program that allows the alt crowd, the big Dobsonian guys, to start doing some imaging with longer exposures. The system will, it works as a, uh, an ASCOM local server and talks to the telescope to get instantaneous altitude and azimuth information. We then create a, or we then calculate a instantaneous derotation rate and send th those signals to the rotator and it ticks away and uh, is, is, uh, is really been exceptional for our users. So in other words, the rotator is talking to the telescope to find out where the telescope is pointed, calculates the speed that it needs to rotate at based on that information and updates it. Exactly. How often does that happen? Well, uh, the, the uh, stepper motor can be every second or perhaps every couple of seconds, but the rate is very important over a five or 10 minute exposure. So we, we instantaneously recalculate the rate based on the current position. Interestingly, if you slew the telescope to a new part of the sky, you have a new new rotation rate, and we calculate that instantaneously as well. Start right up from there. Exactly. So these are for people with big dogs that want to do short exposure astrophotography, five, ten minute exposures. Yes. Not have to worry about field rotation. Exactly. I and mean, they can go longer as well. I mean, they could do thirty minute exposures. Um, there, there's uh, there's nothing inherent in the system that would preclude them from going, uh, you know, deeper than than just five to ten minutes. But at five minutes, 
you'll have derotation problems if you don't. You'll you'll see rotation if you don't if have you don't have derotation. Very good. That's what I mean to say. All right. So tell me a little bit about your luminescent panels. Well, our luminescent panels are designed to uh, make taking flat fields much easier for the uh, astroimager. Um, we have several different sizes. This is an electroluminescence technology that we can control the brightness very precisely. You can get good uniform flat fields, which you then use to calibrate your, uh, your astro images. All right, so you can control the brightness of this over a range? Yes, it's a, uh, a 1 to 255 range. Um, it's quite linear, and we can uh, uh, control it with a, with a great level of precision across the field. So how evenly are these illuminated across the field? Well, we can keep it better than 2% with our uh, feedback control system. So tell me a little bit about this one. It seems to have an unusual mount to it. Yeah, this is actually our original product. It's called the Flip Flat, and it will mount on the side of a refractor and has a motorized dew cap that drops down that also acts as the luminescent film. So you can drop it down, do your flat fields, and also leave it in place at the end of the night as your, as your dust cover. Exactly, yes. All right, and you can control it by computer to flip it up so when you're doing your regular light exposures. Yes, they're all controlled through computers, through USB, um, and, uh, and our... And our uh, so that's great, so you don't even have to be there to, to swing your telescope around to make a flat field. You can just drop the panel in place and go from there. Exactly. How big do you make these all told? Well, this is, a, this is our entry level one at uh, six inches or so. This has got a 13 inch illuminated film, or illuminated size. So that'd be good for 12 inch scopes. <laughs> exactly, yeah, 12, right. 12 and a half. Um, and then we have our larger panels in the back, which are typically mounted uh, at the park position, either on an observatory wall or as you can see on a tripod in this case. All right, so you just slew your telescope over to where it's parked. It's looking right at the panel. Turn the panel on, start making your flat fields. Yes, exactly. How big do you make those? Well, this is our XL24. It's 24 by 24 inches. We also make an XL18 and an XL30. Adam Block is testing a, uh, an XL40 with great results, so we can go as large as uh, 40 inches or more. So with the same illumination held to an even 2% across the whole panel? Yes, exactly. Very good. Adam Block has been testing a 40-inch panel for us, so we can go much larger than even the, 30, the XL30s. Um, these, are, these are a fairly new product for Optech. Alnatech has been making them for a number of years, and uh, we're excited to add them to our product mix. All right, so you've got a great line of stuff here. Yeah, we, we've tried to uh, fill the needs for uh, a lot of astro amateurs. We try to make those things between the telescope and the camera, between the mount and the telescope and now we're adding in some calibration devices. So thank you for showing me all of this. If people want more information, they can go to your website, which is? Yes, it's uh, www.optechinc.com. Optechinc.com. O-P-T-E-C-I-N-C. I-N-C.com. Yes. All right, well listen, thank you very much. Well, I'll thank look you, Dennis. forward to seeing future stuff that you have at more shows. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, thank all you. All right, very good. Thank you. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine at the 2011 AIC Advanced Imaging Conference in California.